All right, thank you so much, TJ. Thank you. We'll call this work session to order. First and foremost, good morning to our citizens of Douglas County, to the Board of Commissioners and to our department heads. Welcome to our work session uh, on this is June 1st, 2020. Happy June 1st. I would like to start off this morning with the approval uh, of the minutes. Board of Commissioners, please be prepared to approve the minutes accordingly. My second uh, statement today would be this, is, again, this is a virtual uh, meeting uh, and under the uh, Open Records uh, Act, uh, this is acceptable during these uh, unprecedented times. So therefore there will be no public comment, but however, I do encourage our citizens to please uh, email your individual um, commissioners, district commissioners, or you please feel free to email me or Mark Teal, the county administrator. We're going to move uh, Board of Commissioners right into tab number four, which is, a, which is a resolution. And tab number four is authorization to approve a resolution of support for the Southern Conservation Trust to, trust to obtain grants. And it requires no match from the county for potential recreation and parks activities at the former Bear Creek Golf Course property and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Ron Roberts. Our planning and zoning manager. Uh, good morning, Commissioner, uh, mm -hmm. Madam Chair. Uh, mm -hmm. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. Yes. So what's before you is a uh, um, a resolution um, uh, in support of the uh, efforts that uh, the Southern Conservation Trust would be making um, towards uh, getting some match, some some not some match, getting some money to uh, do some uh, initial uh, work out at the. Uh, what used to be the Bear Creek Golf Course is over 300 acres. There's uh, five miles of paved trail and um, that is already in place. There's about 26 bridges that are in somewhat disrepair that that uh, they need to uh, move on to uh, to begin to uh, preserve those. Um, little history with this is, uh, you know, we did complete the uh, the uh, comp plan in uh, 2018. Uh, one of the things that citizens uh, stated during that uh, nine-month uh, comprehensive land use plan was the, the desire for more green space. And uh, so this opportunity is out there. We've already met with, um, last winter, we had uh, uh, Katie Pace from the Southern Conservation Trust and Nick Kilberg, who are both on the call as well, um, met with uh, Gary Dukes about the potential of what that could be, what that would look like in the future. And then we uh, had the opportunity to meet with uh, Commissioner Carthen and uh, Commissioner Mitchell back in May um, to, to to discuss this. It's not, it's not uh, hammered out exactly what that will be in the future. What we have is the opportunity um, with this, with the Southern Conservation Trust, for them to uh, uh, move forward to seek some different grant opportunities. So the resolution that is in support of that is just it, it helps them to get the grant funding funding that we, they they will need so that we can um, so that they can move forward with uh, preserving the infrastructure that's already in place and things of that nature. But uh, I am I will answer any any questions. And again, uh, Katie Pace and uh, Nick Kilberg from the Southern Conservation Trust are also on the uh, on the line here today. Okay, thank you so much, Ron. I would first like to see if uh, Katie Pace and Nick Kilbert could provide just some more insight. Also, Ron, and then I will uh, yield to the Board of Commissioners to, for questions. Katie, Katie, are you there? Hi. Hi, Katie. Hi, yes, this is, this is Katie. Um, I'm sorry, it's saying my, my webcam's not working. Um, but yes, so we provide uh, eight public nature preserves currently in Fayette County, uh, free of charge to the community. And uh, we were lucky, lucky enough to take ownership of the old Bear Creek Golf Course a few years ago and really want to extend the same courtesy to Douglas County and open it up as a free nature preserve to the community. Um, but in order to do that, uh, we need some grant funding um, from some large funders and, and just having on record that Douglas County is supporting the nature preserve is gonna go a long way in getting us the funding that we need to move forward with that um, 
And by doing that, we wouldn't need any funding from Douglas County to be able to, to offer this nature preserve. Oh, wow, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Pace. And, and, we've, and we've been doing this for 30 plus years. So uh, we, we're, we're great at nature preserves. <laughs> wow. Uh, Mr. Nick, is it Nick Kilbert? Would you, would you like to add before I yield to my Board of Commissioners? Um, I don't think Nick was able to jump on, but he's our parks director and him and his team go in and develop all of our parks. And I know he's mentioned that uh, we really want to be able to save these bridges because there's already a lot of valuable money in those bridges. So that's a, a reason why we really want to go ahead and get started. Okay. Thank you so much, Katie. Board of Commissioners, I believe we have three uh, and myself, four of commissioners on the phone today. Uh, Commissioner Guider, I don't believe, is on. So I won't call roll. I've heard all of your voices. Uh, Commissioner uh, Carthen, I'll start with you. This is this project is in District 3, and then uh, any other board, of, I mean, any other commissioners, please chime in at that point. Commissioner Carthen? Yes. So um, I have had a chance to uh, speak with um, Katie and Ron, and uh, this is a, a, a well-needed uh, project. Um, for District 3. Uh, I know in running uh, a couple of years ago, I talked to many of people who wanted more trails and more parks. And especially during COVID-19, um, this is a, a welcome addition um, to those uh, in District 3 and in Douglas County as a whole. My only concern is how do we make this a solidified partnership between the Southern um, Conservation Trust and Douglas County? We definitely want them to get these grants and um, our support is there, but we also want to make sure that we are included in this uh, moving forward. So my uh, question to Katie is, how do we solidify this partnership? That's a great question. So, so really we would do and duplicate what we do here in Fayette County. So any parks that we manage within the county, we work hand in hand with the county to make sure we're, we're building something that's gonna be used by the community. So basically we would be talking to you on a regular basis as we move forward and, and letting you know what's going on and asking questions and doing community surveys, to make sure that, that we're not gonna put a park in that nobody's gonna use because we don't wanna waste our time or money either. Um, and we also want to add features in there that that might be very important to the residents over there. Um, so it's gonna it's gonna involve a lot of back and forth discussion between us and y'all. And I think this resolution is the 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 first the first step in in showing that that we're kind of in this together and that that y'all are y'all are really wanting wanting more public recreation. Okay. To that, and Katie, have you already discussed some of this with the residents who are in Bear Creek? or who uh, are near um, where this um, nature preserve take place? We have. Um, our parks director has gone and spoke at the, the HOA meetings um, for the, the community that surrounds Bear Creek, and they're definitely in support of it. Um, currently, Bear Creek has become a little bit of a hazard because it gets a lot of trespassing. Um, the, the sheriff's departments ran a number of people off that have been uh, shooting, shooting firearms and four-wheeling. So, you know, right now it's, it's become more of a hazard to the residents. And so I think they're excited to have something that could potentially increase their property values and provide an amenity to them as well. Okay. So I just want to press that as we move forward, we continue to have these conversations with the community and maybe even working with us to get um, a representation of um, a committee um, together over in Bear Creek to ensure that uh, everybody's voice is heard. Um, I'm glad to see that this is moving forward and uh, I commend um, Douglas County and the Conservation Trust Company for coming together and seeing what we can do to make the quality of life in Douglas County better. Uh, with that, Chairman Jones, I yield. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Uh, Commissioner uh, Mitchell, as the Chairman of the Parks and Recreation do you, uh, Committee, do you have anything to add? I can well, see you. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. not, not much to add outside of um, if, they, if she would explain so to the general public what is a nature park? What is that? What does that entail? So that the general public, and I know we had this conversation before, but so they'll know exactly what that entails and what that looks like and why that those who are supportive of this. And this is the reasoning why as to what you guys are doing. So go ahead. That's a great question because most people don't know the difference between a park and a nature preserve. So a nature preserve is, is more conserved open green space. 
So we're not looking at something that's going to have lots of playgrounds and, and lots of active areas. You're looking at passive recreation. So passive recreation doesn't include ball fields or anything like that. It's trail systems. So it's really connecting people back to nature and, and giving them a place where they can go and enjoy everything in nature that Douglas County has to offer. So this will have biking trails, um, hiking trails. Um, there'll also be some, some pavilions, different things like that. We hope to put a bathroom structure in. But basically it's just gonna be for people to go out and walk their dogs on a leash and, and just go run and, and enjoy the, the trail systems over there. And last but not least, what kind of cost will uh, the Parks and Rec um, uh, Department and or Douglas County will incur in embracing uh, this nature park? Absolutely nothing. And that's, that's the benefit of, of working with a conservancy. Um, all the money is handled with us. So we will, we will raise support uh, through corporate and foundation funding and through our own funding uh, to fund every, every penny of the park. So y'all will never have to pay a dime for, for the nature preserve. Got it, got it. And, and, and last but not least, and I know we've had these conversations and I appreciate you just kind of sharing with the general public. The last question is, what kind of liabilities, if any, that happens at the park that um, the county would incur, if anything? And, and, and I'll also pass that torch also, not only to you, but to our legal department to say, have they had a chance to review uh, this layout? But first, to you, ma'am. Right, and we can send everything over over to the legal department as well, but uh, we carry a very, very high liability policy and everything falls underneath us because we already operate so many public nature preserves and private land as it is, we're, uh, we're very accustomed to carrying those policies. And since we will be the owners of the property, all liability will fall to us. Got it. And I guess Ken, I, I'm assuming Ken is on the call, but on, on this, this chat, Ken, I don't know if you had a chance to review all that. Hey, okay. Commissioner, well, this is Ken. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I concur with what was just said. I think because they, to the extent it's private ownership, they would have liability responsibility. The government would be, the government is merely supporting this resolution that allows them to get further grant funding. So I don't see a burden, I don't see a burden on the county. If it were county property now, there would be a different issue that we might have to address, but I don't see this particular resolution being problematic. Okay, have you had a chance to review the thing though, Ken? I'm sorry. Have you had a chance to review everything? I, I haven't seen the actual resolution. What I have is the actual agenda item, but I'll be glad to look at it, Ron. I'll do it so today. Can you do that today and, and kind of report back to the commissioners, kind of what that looks like, and if there are any concerns that you, and, and, and for those of you who are probably not speaking, you might want to mute your mics because there's a lot of noise going on. If you'll mute your mics. All right, I can't. Uh, you, can you review that so commissioners to ensure uh, what you see is, is okay and you can agree with what we got? Okay, I'm out of here. I'm going to leave it there and uh, I'll, I'll, I'm done. I mean, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. And Vice Chairman Robinson, I can't see you, but I hear you. Um, I, I didn't hear you say anything. Would you like to uh, chime in or add before I move on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, r real quick, and I'll be brief. I'm, I'm sensitive to the time. Um, when we talk about our trail systems, um, I recognize this is in District 3. Uh, we had once um, looked at a comprehensive trail system throughout the entire county. So my question becomes, uh, I know this is a nature preserve and I get into intra-district um, um, places and spaces. My, my question was, will this be able to connect to a broader trail system? That's my first question. Yeah, um, can somebody weigh in who can speak to this? I don't know if Miguel is on the line, but. You don't have to speak out of turn if you don't know, but please give me some understanding of how this will connect to a broader trail system. Somebody. All right, Commissioner, I'll take that one. Um, you know, we've been involved with the the, the Riverland study, which is a, a, a trail network that they're looking at from Buford Dam all the way to Chattahoochee Bend National 
for us. And that's been going on for some time now with the, um, the Trust for Public Land and the Atlanta Regional Commission. Um, I've been involved as a stakeholder in that group. I have let them know about the potential at Bear Creek for this future uh, park um, and uh, potential connectivity uh, to uh, the, the overall Riverland study, which phase two and phase three are both in Douglas County. Um, so we've, we've let them know about that um, and uh, have plans to, and it was included in the overall study for the Riverland as a, a point of connection that would come from uh, the Chattahoochee River area uh, north to, to Bear Creek. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, and, and thank you. I, this, it's important that, you know, so the left hand knows what the right hand is doing. Um, and, and sometimes it's important to push, to your point, a connectivity, that this is not just an isolation, that we do have leverage. There is a bigger picture here, and we're trying to optimize all of our resources and assets at the same time. So um, I, I just, I won't belabor this. I know Parks and Rec um, have this under control, but it was just one of, I didn't want to forget about that because we did spend some time and energy regarding that conservation, that trail system that we once talked about that went all the way down 166 um, and what that meant for us. So I, I don't want to lose that body of work, um, nor um, the momentum that had, um, went into that. So that's all I'm sure. I just wanted to bring up some, some history. I think that's important. Um, and I'll yield the floor at this point. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, Madam Chair, this is Ken. Uh, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Ron, just, just to confirm for the commission, if you would, when Bear Creek was developed, it was probably developed as a PUD that had, the, had this as an amenity for the subdivision. And I don't know what the acquisition chain has been since the golf course went out of business, but... Is, have, is the community over there, I don't know if it still has a homeowner association or not, is there any opposition to this before this board considers this resolution? Because it actually, it's an amenity that backs up to some homeowners who were there at a time when they bought, had a golf course. And I know there's been a lot of controversy about that over time. Do we know the position of the homeowners? Well, um the Southern Conservation Trust uh, staff has, has has met with the HOA Ken um, on a number of occasions, and, and people are supportive of it. Um, from a, from a standpoint, we talked to Commissioner Carthen and, and Commissioner Mitchell about what actually we could possibly add or uh, have at this uh, preserve area. Um, you know, um, and and that's something that we would be doing uh, as as staff helping to you know, with some of the surveys and some of the other outreach that we would be doing along that corridor, because we're planning on looking at the uh, 166 corridor anyways. And so we would include in that uh, the opportunity for citizens to weigh in um, and, and specifically uh, contiguous property owners to this parcels that would allow for them to uh, uh, to, to have some some in, some uh, some say, some insight uh, into what, what would actually, uh, the, the other potentials that, we, that could be developed at the, at this, location. I do want to add that, um, you know, if we have to, you know, look at a potential rezoning of something, then that's something we would address later on. But that would come from the, the organic discussion with the property owners themselves so that we, you know, discerned exactly what what it is. If it's just a passive park area, then I, I don't see any conflict at all. And and and, and, and then that's actually what Katie and, and Nick have talked to them about currently. Uh, and so people seem to be supportive of that for sure. It's a way to, for them to, to, to actually secure that because right now, as Katie alluded to early in the call, a lot of people are getting in and um, they're they're uh, they're riding the trails in and uh, the the power lines and stuff like that, and it's causing kind of a problem. So, you know, having it more secure would would definitely be a benefit to these citizens and residents. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, um, Attorney Bernard. All right. Thank you so much, Ron, for this presentation, for the presentation this morning. And uh, we look forward to great things happening in that Bear Creek golf course area. Uh, tab number five is related to their, um, we have grants, authorization to accept the COVID-19 grant funds in the amount of $9,641.26 
from the Secretary of State's office and amend the Board of Elections budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Um, Director Kidd, are you there? Milton Kidd. Mark Teal, would you like to take it for him? Yeah, Milton's on here. Um, so essentially, these are funds that he's receiving from the state. Um, yes, I'm on here. Okay, okay there's he's on there. Okay, thank you. Okay, these are uh, these are essentially are funds uh, part of the uh, that Harvard grant uh, that the federal government passed to help alleviate some of uh, the concerns around COVID-19 for state uh, and local governments. They have a $15,000 matching fund. This is the first round of our applications that we've submitted to them. The 15,000 is the total amount that you can actually request. So this one, this first round is for 9,641. Uh, $9,641.21, and I fully anticipate that we will supply uh, information to them as well to receive the rest of the $15,000 matching funds from the state. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Director Kidd. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners or any comments? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Chairman Jones. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Carton. Director Kidd, this question is for you. What will these funds be used for? Uh, during COVID-19 for those individuals who are coming into the courthouse and other uh, um, venues around the county for voting? Yeah, you're on mute. <laughs> okay, here we go. For voting purposes, uh, we've supplied masks to all of our poll workers. We've also provided masks uh, for all of our voters that come into a polling location. We cannot mandate that they put on a mask outside of the courthouse, but we have uh, those masks available. And in most cases, voters have complied with that. Part of our uh, other initiatives that we've taken, we've secured uh, different cleaning methods to clean and sanitize polling locations that have been uh, supplied to all of our polling locations. If you have voted in person uh, this election, you also notice that with your voter access card, giving each voter a stylus that they can individually use that will be sanitized and has been sanitized between each voter using those uh, stylus in order to minimize contact and touching any of the screen in our locations. We also have sanitizing stations with hand sanitizer located throughout the polling location to help alleviate any voter concerns with uh, sanitizing their hands, even though they're not actually uh, touching those purposes. So these grants were matching funds that they had three uh, general areas that you can submit for any security options that you've uh, supplied for the elections, any accessibility uh, items that you've had to purchase, and uh, any uh, items related to COVID, specifically really related to COVID-19 that you've had to purchase, including mass sanitizing options, like I said, the stylus and things like that. Great. Thank you so much for that, because we do want voters to know and the public to know that we're taking all steps in order to ensure that they have a safe um, voting um, season. And, and just to also let them know that uh, we're taking into consideration that if you don't mail in your ballot, you do have the right to come to the courthouse or to any of the voting precincts and cast a ballot without fear. So thank you. You do have the right to come to a polling location and uh, cast a ballot, but we are still accepting absentee ballot applications and continue to mail out absentee ballots all the way up into the technical deadline is June the 5th. But if anyone is considering mailing in an absentee ballot, I ask that they go ahead and submit those applications now and not wait until Friday's date because those ballots have to leave our office via the post office but we are still mailing out ballots. We're still accepting ballots. If voters have absentee ballots, 
uh, in their possession that they have not returned to our office. There is a drop box located in front of the courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive. It is clearly labeled as absentee balloting box. I ask voters to either utilize that or they can just uh, mail it in to us as well. Thank you so much, uh, Director Kidd. I do have one other question for you. I have had a couple of emails of constituents who have not received their absentee ballots yet. What is the best way for them to check the status of those absentee ballots? Okay, the best way to check the status of your absentee ballot is to log on to my voter page. That URL is mbp.sos.ga.us. But the quickest and easiest way to do that, if a voter types in Georgia, my voter page, in whatever search engine they use, it will be the first option. It will ask you to enter your first initial, your last name, the county in which you live. You'll be able to see your absentee ballot information. That particular website website also contains uh, your sample ballot. If voters are intending on voting in person, they can pull their sample ballot, and that helps to alleviate some of the time inside of the voting booth. But if a voter uh, does not see their absentee ballot as being issued on that My Voter page, they can always give the office a call, and we can track down if uh, that ballot has been issued or if we need to do a duplication and reissue a ballot. We do not control the post office, so sometimes uh, absentee ballots have gotten, uh, have not made it their way to a voter's home. But in those cases, we cancel out that ballot. We have a contact person with the post office that we try to track down that ballot and see where it uh, fell through the chain. And we reissue an absentee ballot for that voter. But if they have any concerns with their absentee ballot, give us a call. My staff is here from 8 to 6. Um, well, we're here every day of the week, but uh, we're here normal business hours as well. Thank you so much, Director Kidd. And could you give that phone number just for those who are listening and who may go back and, and um, listen to this recording? Okay. You can reach my office. One second. Let me get the correct line. You can reach my office at 770-920-7213. Once again, that's 770-920-7213. That's uh, voter registration and elections questions can all come to that same number and it'll be disseminated to the correct person. Thank you so much. Chairman Jones, I yield. All right, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carthen and also Director Kidd. All right, any other questions or comments before I move forward, board? All right, I'm gonna move on to tab number six, authorization to accept Families First Coronavirus Response Act funding, FFCRA from the Atlanta Regional Commission in the amount of $65,594.21 to provide uh, nutrition services, home delivered meals, HDC2, and congregate meals, CMC2, for adults age 60 plus and kinship caregivers age 55 plus and amend the budget. This contract does not require a match. Dr. Gilcrest, good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Board of Commissioners. Thank you so much. Um, yes, we have received an amount of $65,594.21 to help meet the food insecurity needs of older adults in Douglas County. The funds have been specifically earmarked for seniors who live alone and um, those who live in senior communities, such as Alpha Fowler, Highland Park, and Connors Village. So what we will do is um, we've already conducted surveys of those communities to see how many seniors um, may be in need of food. And we will provide hot meals to them and also um, emergency um, food boxes to them with these funds. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Gilchrist. Any questions for Dr. Gilchrist Board of Commissioners? Okay, sounds pretty. Yeah. Oh, Commissioner Carthen, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I'm talking a lot today, but they, these are all these are all great things and, and um, good subject matters. Uh, Dr. Gilchrist, have you? Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about how those hot meals will be handled? Are we utilizing any of the businesses within Douglas County 
to help with those congregate meals. How are we doing that? What What is your plan? And I'm sure you have one, so that's why I'm asking. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, recently, we received $4,144 from the Atlanta Region Commission to provide emergency meals to those seniors um, who are on our wait list. They're not active um, on our roster as of yet. They're currently on our wait list. And so what we did, we felt that it would be a win-win situation for the older adults and for um, businesses, small businesses. And so um, we began that service today. We partnered with um, Blue Rose Bistro. We also partnered with Landmark Diner and Farmer's Table. We, um, the funds will help us provide 23 hot meals to 18 seniors um, that are on our wait list. And so um, Landmark Diner, we are using them this week. Next week, um, we'll use Farmer's Table, and then after that, we'll use Blue Rose um, Bistro to help meet, the, um, help meet the needs. With these funds here, we can do some very creative things because the funds do not have to meet the, um, the meals do not have to meet the nutritional value. And so we'll go um, back around to businesses in the community to try to see um, how we can be creative and serve um, all of the older adults in Douglas County who may have a need. And um, with the food boxes, we're looking at local farmers um, and local farmer markets, and also with Gooder Food Rescue um, out of the um, city of Atlanta to see if we can put together weekly uh, boxes for older adults in the county. Um, what we will be able to do is um, Douglas County, um, Madam Chair and the Board of Commissioners provided us with $10,000 um, to utilize. And so what we've done with that money, we sent out um, care packages to seniors in the county and the care packages included toiletries and um, shelf stable foods. And what we're also going to do with the remainder of those funds is do a drive through um, food box day where seniors in the county will be able to come to our facility and will they pop their trunks and we'll be able to fill their trunks with um, fresh fruit and vegetables. Thank you, Dr. Gilchrist. Uh, it's good to know that we are all in this together in Douglas County and that we're utilizing those businesses here and those farm, um, farm to table um, entities here to help meet the need uh, in our county. Uh, with that, Chairman Jones, I yield. All right, thank you so much. Any other comment or questions for Dr. Gilchrist, Board of Commissioners? All right, thank you so much. Um, thank you. Commissioner Carthen, and thank you so much, Dr. Gilchrist. We're going to move on to tab number seven is one of our business items, uh, tab number 789 of business items. Uh, tab number seven is approval of the Connect Douglas 2021 through 2023 disadvantaged business enterprise plan as required by the Federal Transit Administration with the goal based on the FTA methodology and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Gary Watson. Good, Good morning, morning, everyone. Good morning. As a Federal Transit Administration grantee, uh, one of our requirements is that every three years we have to set a goal for disadvantaged business enterprise in our uh, federally funded projects. Now, one thing that uh, we need to point out is that the FTA has a very specific set of rules and formulas for setting this goal. It's based on the federally funded projects that we expect to, to undertake, the total number of available certified vendors in a particular business code, and the total number of available certified DBEs in a particular business code. Um, our compliance officer, Janet Willis, is on the, the call today. Janet has spent a lot of time researching and developing um, our goal uh, using the FTA methodology. And so I'm going to turn the conversation over to Janet to talk a little more about our, our goal and how uh, we came about that. Janet, are you with us? Uh, yes, I'm here, Gary. Good okay, morning. Go um, as Gary stated, the, uh, the DBE goal is required to be based on availability of certified DBEs in, in your uh, areas um, where the projects will be led. The issue, our DBE goal is projected to be about 2.2%. 
And one reason why it is so low is because the projects that we are anticipating to let are kind of highly specialized. The more specialized a project is, uh, the less chance you're going to have of certified DBEs. And as you can see, we're anticipating to uh, let contracts for uh, shelters, benches and receptacles, bike equipment, fare box technology, and even the planning study uh, since it's transportation related. And we just didn't have DBEs in those areas, but we're receiving federal money on those projects. So we are required to, uh, uh, to count those, those dollars, even though they're earning certified DBEs. Um, and that's basically how, why the DBE goal is, is so low, it's 2.2%. Now, if you have any questions specifically about the DBE goal, I'll be happy to, to answer okay. any. Okay. Board of Commissioners, we have any questions uh, for Janet Willis? Uh, okay. Yes. I, I hear, uh, okay, Vice Chairman Robinson, I hear your voice. Yes. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, two, two questions. Um, the first question is, um, how will we track compliance. Um, and I, I know you gave a framework, but this is important to us. Um, obviously, the federal uh, the federal standard is something that we use here locally. Um, we, when we introduced, um, well, when Adam Carson introduced the disadvantaged business to enterprise ordinance here locally. So we use sort of the, the federal standard, and then obviously we leverage other things. So I, I'm going to come back to, and, and Janet, you probably can answer this, how will we track it, and how well are we doing so far? Let's start with that. Well, now, this, this goal won't start until 2021. And how we track this is this the, the whole 2.2% will be race neutral. And that's because we, we, we didn't put a, a race conscious goal in here, because if you look at the projects, there's really no subcontracting opportunity available. So um, we don't anticipate being able to um, to come up with any type of race conscious um, goal, unless um, when we purchase those shelters and benches, we decide that we want to um, go outside of the county to have them installed. Uh, the assumption was that county personnel would install the shelters and benches once that time comes which is kind of the norm. Uh, but sometimes the county and personnel be so busy at the time that you go out to, uh, to bid for that work. And, and there are quite a few contractors out there that do that work, but we just didn't include it in the goal because the assumption in the beginning is that, from the very beginning is that um, the county personnel is gonna do that work in house. But we will, we will monitor the goal from the very beginning. Once we put the contract out, uh, it's, it's like I said, it's race neutral. So we have to do some mitigation, such as making sure that um, uh, DBEs or DBEs are aware that we're putting these contracts out, but they won't have a goal, a subcontracting goal on them.
we're, we're conceding where there's opportunity to give others an opportunity that have been historically locked out, and then we, we bring it in-house, we'll just do it ourselves. Well, we're, we're working against the very policy that we're, we're putting in place, where at least staff is going against what the, the Board of Commissioners are looking to do. Right? And, and so it's that type of subtle sidestep that there, there needs to be a more connectedness that says, okay, but you, you, I, I need a consciousness. Right? It, it can't just be, well, I get it, but it, it, it's like then we're just going through the motions of what I call government checkboxes. But it has to come alive. Right? It has to truly acknowledge and fulfill. Else we're going through the motions. So, all right, I'm going to let that go. All right, you got that. You know exactly where I'm at. All right, number two is as um, I get 2021 and I, I get going forward. And so will there be, and I'm sure we'll probably can take this just into transportation committee. I, and I, that, that's why I don't want to push this too hard. But will there be an opportunity uh, where we can consciously, and, and Gary, um, maybe this is really to Gary, um, will we have a chance to outsource some things, or will there be some recommendations that will come forth that will help us fulfill it versus we just want to get it done and go through the motions? I mean, do you see opportunities, like you said, benches and, and things like that, like the plexiglass on the buses and retrofitting of the buses, or I, I'm just making this up, uh, the quarantine that is um, the sheltering in place that we're having to do. I mean, will there be opportunities that they help with that, um, uh, the purchase of additional buses, or I, I'm, I'm making this up, but as I think through this, like, no, there's no opportunities. We just haven't thought through them. Gary, can you talk to me real quick? And that'll be my last question. Yes, sir. Yes, Commissioner, your your points are very well taken, and and let me say this: um, even though we we may be setting our Federal Transit Administration DBE goal at 2.2 percent, we will try our absolute absolute best to go way above and and beyond that. But however, uh, when you're dealing with federal regulations and and reporting. It's, it's much better to exceed your goal than to fall under it. So, uh, because that that generally kicks in a whole new set of reporting that you have to follow through. So while uh, based on the FTA methodology, we do need to set our goal at 2.2%, um, we will make every effort uh, to strive to go far, far beyond that. And we will look at the projects that we have moving forward and, and uh, turn over every stone to see what kind of DBE possibilities uh, we have in that. And also keep in mind, this, this is just a proposed list of projects uh, as we move forward um, with our, our programs and services. There may be other uh, uh, contracting opportunities that come up that will be av available. Uh, for for DBEs, uh, so uh, we while while we're having to set this go so low, we we certainly anticipate doing much better than that with it. No, I get it, and um, I thank you. And, and Gary, you're you're you know I have um, strong confidence in, in how you bring these federal our approach to the federal part. So we're, we're fine. I, I think you know I'm just bringing out more of our overall collective performance against that. Uh, but yet, we're going in the right direction. We're moving forward. So, do be noted. I'll, I'll just yield and take this back to transportation. Madam Chair, thank you. I yield. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Robinson. All right, thank Chair you so Michelle. much. Uh -huh. Thank you, Commissioner Carthen. Thank you so much for allowing me to, to take the floor on this issue. Uh, our past DBE participation review, I looked at that um, and from 2016 to 2019. In 2016, we were at zero, but we spent $621,958. In 2017, we were at zero, yet we spent $276,381. In, in 2018, we spent $121,385. Dollars zero participation. 2019, one million five hundred sixty thousand six hundred seventy-seven dollars. Eight percent of that went to DBE. So I want 
the county to know and the, and the citizens of Douglas County to know we went from zero to 8% um, instituting a DBE and because Gary Watson pushed and because Janice Watson came on board and because we got that DBE policy uh, passed in the county. And so I do want people to know that we are systematically trying to change the process and move forward so that we're inclusive because it's important. It is. It's totally important, and especially during the climate of which we live in today, that we want people to know that Douglas County is changing. So while we do know that there is room for improvement and 2% is what we have today, we want to ensure that we continue to progress forward. So um, I thank you guys for what you are doing. However, we got to push for a little bit more. So that may mean going to Atlanta, that may mean going to Cobb, that may mean advertising um, outside the county so that people will know Douglas County is open for business and that we are fair across the board. Uh, and we have to be because these are federal dollars. So um, again, um, I wanna push that issue. I wanna echo the sentiments of uh, Commissioner Robinson and um, kudos to what we have done to get to this point. So with that, Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. And any other comment, Board Commissioners, I'm going to move on at this point. Thank you so much, Director Watson, and also uh, Mrs. Willis. Thank you so much uh, for your contribution. And again, thank you, Commissioner Carthen, for that DBE effort here in the county. Certainly, that was some great discussions me and you had, certainly when you took over as chairman of the Purchasing Oversight Committee was concerned about our DBE status, and you took it and ran with it. And I commend you again wholeheartedly for moving the needle from zero to 8%. So that means, and I, I heard you loud and clear, we have a lot more uh, room for growth and we're just proud of the eight and we're going, our, our target is always 100% or either at least 50% of, of this DBE status. So thank you for propelling and moving this uh, initiative DBE forward here in Douglas County. We're gonna move on to our next item and my computer is tab number eight. Authorization for Douglas County Sheriff's Office to renew the chaplain services agreement starting July 4th, 2020 with Reverend Edwin Ford and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents, documents pending legal review. Um, Major Holmes. M Madam Chair, this is Ken. Yes. I talked to Bobby before this meeting. He was having some difficulty in accessing <clears throat> remotely the meeting, so I'll speak for him unless he's on. Bobby, are you there? It sounds like he's not. Madam Chair, this is simply a renewal of the contract with uh, Reverend Edward Ford to serve as the chaplain at the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. Same terms, it's just simply a renewal and it's a uh, term of what any time up to seven days notice. This really comes to us, uh, aside from the budget, I guess, impact more as a courtesy because the sheriff has the authority to hire a chaplain. Having said that, it's just a renewal. Okay. Thank you. Pretty self-explanatory. Any questions or comments from the board before I go forward? All right. I'm going to move on. Yeah. Did this, I don't see the dollar amount attached to this. Is it the same dollar amount as it was last year? Uh, uh, well, the dollar, uh, Madam Carthen, I, I believe that it, uh, well, I was told by Bobby it was, it's for $40,000. It's for one year. And with all the other terms from the last one, so I assume, and maybe Mark can address. I think it was forty last year as well. Yeah, I have not seen it, uh, but I was told it was the same. I, I believe that number is the same, uh, Commissioner Carth, and we can verify between now and tomorrow for you. But that's what Bobby told me. Thank you so much, uh, Attorney Bernard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield with that. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Attorney Bernard, and also Commissioner. Carthen, thank you. We're going to move on to tab number nine, authorization to approve a M an MOU with GDOT to install roadway lighting at State Route uh, 402 and I-20 at State Route 6 Thornton Road North and South ramps and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, our county administrator, Mark Till. Uh, yes, this is the same as the MOUs we recently approved for Highway 5, Lee Road, and I think possibly Liberty Road. So it's a MOU with the Georgia Department of Transportation to maintain the street lights or the roadway lighting as they call it in the MOU for uh, Thornton Road and I-20. Okay. Any questions from the boards or comments? 
All right, sounds pretty self-explanatory. We're excited about the lights coming in that area and all the other um, interstate um, ramps as well uh, along that I-20 corridor here in Douglas County. All right, Board of Commissioners, any other comments before I talk to um, certainly ask our attorney, Bernard, if he, we need to go into executive session. Any other comments, Board of Commissioners? Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? We do for litigation, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Will we able to come back and make uh, comments after our executive session? You will. Yes, Vice Chair. Right. We will. Okay. I, I make a motion to go into executive session. Second. <laughs> okay. We override to radio. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> okay, we have a motion in a second. In the discussion, we have a motion in a second. Please indicate by saying uh, yes and you and state your name. Ramona Jackson Jones, yes. District One Commissioner Mitchell, yes. District Three Commissioner Mitchell, uh, District Three Tarina <laughs> McCarthy, yes. <laughs> okay. Vice Chairman Robinson, are you? Yes, ma'am. So I will leave because this is executive session. Uh, Commissioner Carthen, uh, Vice Chairman will be calling you and hopefully to do the same system if that's okay with you. Okay. All right. But you haven't got his confirmation, though, Madam Chair. Yeah, I don't have his confirmation. Is he? Okay. Let me call him back then, all right? Okay. Yeah, we just hung up one second. Uh, you're okay. muted, uh, Commissioner Carthen. Commissioner Robinson, we need, yeah, we, we are voting to go into executive session and we need you to uh, state whether or not you agree to go into executive session with your name and yay or nay, yes or no. Kelly Robinson, yay. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we have a, a unanimous uh, decision to move forward. The motion carries, so thank you. Um, we will hang up, right, Mark, Teal, and then- Yes. So, okay. Commissioner Mitchell, if you'll log in to the invite I Jessica sent this morning, yep. and then we'll it. invite everybody else on. Just got keep it. your Microsoft Teams on. Got it. Thank you. And you'll just call us back, right, Mark? My phone. Will, I mean, yes, ma'am. Make sure okay. you keep your MS Teams on. Okay. Thank I'm you. Logging in now, Mark. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, TJ and Board of Commissioners. Thank you as well for our executive session and we would have returned um, back and to our citizens. Um, Commissioner uh, Robinson, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, I believe you said you had a comment um, and, and certainly I'll yield to all the commissioners if you had a comment before we close today or end this meeting. Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, one comment um, regarding the business item and the second one would be more of a an announcement, so I'll, I'll take it um, in that order. Um, it, obviously, um, our next finance committee meeting is when we're going to all um, have an opportunity to hear from um, our staff, um, specifically our advisor, on what our current state is from a financial perspective. Um, there's an awful lot going on in society right now um, on, on multiple levels. But yet, at, at a local level, we still have to keep our eyes on the ball of what our current financial state is. 
Um, obviously, the full board of commissioners are aware of this, um, and we've been anticipating this. So at our finance committee, there'll be a revealing of our current state um, of financial affairs after a stress test is, um, is completed against our financials, um, as well as several options that may be available to the Board of Commissioners. Um, that will be presented to the Finance Committee first. The very next meeting, it will go to the full Board of Commissioners. There will not be a recommendation from the Finance Committee, as is our process uh, on something of this magnitude. It's just more of a making sure it's properly presented. Uh, we all equally get to look at this um, off the cuff, um, and based on the full Board of Commissioners seeing it, then they will give feedback um, and then that will go into uh, the finance committee as to what option the full board wants us to pursue. Uh, again, we're not going to make a recommendation to the full, full board because your input matters. Um, and then obviously we'll go through the process thereafter without belaboring it. But I know people have been asking us, um, you know, well, what's our plan? Well, there's two plans. There's the plans of how we're going to go back as a, as a county, and then there's also a financial plan. Is how do we weather a storm when we know that we had softness um, in our local economy? Uh, what is that impact, and how will we deal with this? And so, um, well, obviously, I just wanted to put everybody on notice um, that that meeting should be, what, two weeks from today at 2 o'clock? And uh, so I just wanted to bring that up. So uh, I'm going to yield on that um, 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 uh, comment. Uh, regarding the committee. Uh, to that point also, I'd like to um, make an announcement that um, for District 2, um, for those constituents, we are doing a, um, a state of the district um, um, staff, uh, Rick, TJ, all of you all, you guys probably should have received it or will receive um, that communication for full support. That state of the district will be this coming Friday. Um, at 7 o'clock. And so this is um, something that has historically been done in our district, but because of the pandemic and, and because of a lot of different things, and it just, we, we just, the timing wasn't right, but uh, the timing seemed to be just about right to give a current uh, and future state of where District 2 um, is going. So um, all citizens who are interested in that, you will get more information. But this coming Friday at 7 o'clock for District 2, uh, uh, a state of our district. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Commissioner Carthen, you have anything to add or Commissioner Mitchell? I, I do. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Uh, just an announcement that on June 15th um, at 6.30 p.m., um, I will be doing a quarantine, which is a, a play on words with the quarantine, with the quarantine that's going on, uh, and just getting information out to the constituents. Um, but I want their questions. I want to be able to answer those questions uh, in regards to what people have on their hearts and minds um, regarding this time uh, as we start to open back up and to piggyback off of what Commissioner Robinson said, what will that look like for the county? What will that look like for our residents? And, and what would that look like um, for us um, here? So uh, again, that will be June 15th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we ask that constituents um, please submit your questions by June 12th at 5 p.m. Uh, you can do that by emailing me, tcarthen at co.douglas.ga.us. Um, also email me regarding um, any questions that you have on uh, any of our upcoming um, meetings, um, whether you want your comments to be read online, just as Chairman Jones indicates at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, I have had some questions, uh, some emails regarding um, planning uh, that the city of Douglasville is doing. And I just want to let uh, constituents know uh, commissioners and the city are, are separate. So I can't really weigh in on what the city is doing. However, if you do email me, uh, I will reach out on your behalf just to see what I can find out. Um, so with that, Chairman Jones, um, I yield. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Commissioner Mitchell, you have any comments? Well, I don't have any comments uh, outside of great meeting. Let's move on to tomorrow. Okay. Well, I'll just close things out today. Again, citizens and the Board of Commissioners, thank you so much for joining us for our June 1st of work session today. And Commissioner Carthen, to, uh, you said in response to what you just said regarding citizens reaching out uh, for, uh, to you about the city, I do have a um, COVID-19 town hall coming um, uh, on June 4th, which is this coming Thursday at 6.30. And uh, both uh, mayors, uh, Mayor Robinson from Douglasville and uh, Mayor uh, McDougal from Villarica are invited 
and they will share an update regarding. So that'll be a perfect time, and I hope our citizens are listening. And also, citizens, we've had an opportunity to uh, take a deep dive into the public uh, health component. Last week, I had a town hall on mental health because that is that element is very important as we go forward because all of us are stressed in one form, uh, one way or another. And then last but not least, I wanted to take a look at the economic side, this uh, this town hall that I have coming up this Thursday. So I've invited, uh, we'll be inviting uh, Chris Pumphrey from the economic development side, Breezy Straighten uh, from um, workforce development, and then Sarah Ray from the small businesses uh, business component. So uh, please stay tuned. That uh, that uh, information will be released today, but certainly would love for our citizens to sit in so we could talk about the economic side as well. Um, with that being said, I would just like to give a quick update. I hope everyone is staying safe during the, amid this uh, coronavirus pandemic. And then also wanted to share that as of today, uh, or should I say as of last night at 7 p.m., we had 543 confirmed cases of COVID-19 here in Douglas County with 25 deaths at this time. And my heart goes out to the families and also to our deceased um, members of our county. Uh, and we are just, uh, again, we are in this together. Uh, we are fighting the good fight and I appreciate all the great things that we are doing uh, collectively with our discipline to make sure that we are uh, taking advantage of that social distancing component, making sure that we are definitely uh, wearing a mask uh, in those required areas. Uh, certainly it's recommended, but I know it's a, a, a person who has worn a mask most, uh, most of her career in surgery. Uh, I realize that it is not a comfortable situation. You have to learn to breathe and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tight fit on your face, but I do appreciate the citizens discipline here in Douglas County. That sanitation component is very, uh, very important as we go forward at also with the disinfection of your surfaces and um, and making sure that you have that good hand hygiene. So citizens, we're in this together. Uh, again, thank you for joining our work session today. Board of Commissioners, thank you for your time and talent as we go forward and uh, look forward to our uh, Board of Commissioners meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. Again, thank you. And if there's nothing else to come before this board, this meeting is a commission uh, Carter. Yes. Carter. Yeah. I, I didn't know if you, if you were going to mention this, but thank you so much for the floor. Just a, a quick uh, second that I just wanted to um, congratulate those protesters who came to Douglas County yesterday and did an outstanding job of keeping the peace. We all know what has happened in our country. It does not um, not affect Douglas County. It affects us all. So my prayers go out to all of those families who have lost family members. Uh, in regard to COVID and also those family members who have lost um, loved ones in regards to uh, senseless killings. Um, Douglas County, we are united. We want to continue to stand united and we want to continue to keep the peace and we pray uh, that that continues to happen. Uh, thank you to those uh, um, officers yesterday who um, exemplified what great um, officing, uh, officer um, and community um, looks like um, coming together. And um, for your leadership, uh, Chairman Jones, and making sure that those um, sheriff officers and others had what they needed uh, in order to keep order, keep peace, and, and, um, and let people um, exercise their First Amendment rights. So kudos to you and your administration, and thank you. I yield. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. You're so more than welcome. And also, I want to make sure that we uh, include the fire department, who uh, certainly you serve as the vice chairman. They uh, they were there as well yesterday, and I know uh, Commissioner G uh, uh, Guida would be as proud as well that they represented, and also our paramedics were there, and everything went quite well. And my heart goes out to the Floyd family. And again, uh, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carthen, for bringing that to light. We are in this together and uh, justice shall reign. All right. Well, with that being said, Board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come before this board, uh, board uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.